I just want to say it's also really nice to see Golden Spamfish back in his element. Like he's yeah. now crushing. Look at how oh, yeah. fast he's getting Look these models this, together. Yeah. Already like, got those three totally months, killing. Yeah, yeah, on the outside. Um, Ivan, on the other hand, created that one feature. In the very hey, what's up, everybody? Today, we're going to take a look at an epic highlight reel from the October 21st matchup between Ivan the Reasonable and the Golden Spamfish. And one of my favorite parts about this battle was about two thirds of the way through when Ivan pulls off a move body command. Keep an eye out for that move. It was really cool how he was able to use that command to solve this challenge. If you want to watch the full matchup, the full battle, the full episode, I'll include a link down in the description to the October 21st live stream. And of course, I hope you will join us live on November 11th, where we're going to live stream the semifinals, the finals, and the crowning of a new world champion of 3D CAD speed modeling. All right, here we go, guys. We're going to flip over to our full screen here. We're going to see our next match between... The Golden Spamfish and Ivan the Reasonable on Shape vs. SolidWorks. Here we go. This CAD battle begins in three, two, one, go. What is the mass of this part in XXXX grams? The tolerance is plus or minus two grams. The runners are grabbing a screen capture of this part. It's called a space plate because it's used in a spaceship somewhere. <laughs> and and uh, you can see this part's made of 1060 aluminum alloy. Uh, you can see that the, th the rib geometry is the same for all three. Looks like both of our runners have grabbed a screen capture and are jumping into their CAD. Let's take a look and see how they approach this thing. We see the Golden Spamfish started out with a new sketch on the top plane, created a sketch of a 190 millimeter circle. That is gonna be his starting sketch, his starting profile. It also is defining the location of the origin. Whenever you're working in 3D CAD, you gotta make sure that you think about where is the origin gonna be located? What's my first sketch profile gonna look like? If we look on the right at Ivan the Reasonable, we can see he's taking a very different approach. Uh, I'm glad this is happening. Yeah, we're, we're taking two completely different approaches is here i love it ivan the reasonable is creating what's what's ultimately going to be a cross section of the of the part and then he's going to do what's called a revolve so you just create half of the part you create a cross section and then you spin that around a circle kind of like a lathe if you're familiar with using a lathe for woodwork or for machine work so we've got two very different approaches here one looking at this thing kind of looking down from the top how it's going to set onto the spaceship the other looking at it a little more like how it might be machined so very cool to see the two different approaches. Yeah, I don't know if this has been mentioned on the show, but um, yeah, you know, we're seeing this a lot lately. Depending on where you come from, as far as you know, when you were born, you know, <laughs> a, a lot of people will do you know more of a manufacturing turn part approach if they're a little bit older, and if they're a little younger and grew up with the additive techniques, you know, you're seeing like what uh, the golden spamfish is doing with the um, you know extruding it up as if it was you know made on you know, um, modern additive uh, equipment, right? So there's, you know, 3D printing kind of uh, first kind of thought process in, in designing parts. So you know, it's something that that we've been noticing, you know, at Onshape, so. That's very cool. That's very, very interesting. Yeah, X Machina says it. That's a cool observation, Mike. That is very interesting to think of, you know, how the, how the, uh, the influence of the technology that was available as you were coming up might affect your design decisions in 3D CAD and your, your kind of feature tree construction in 3D CAD. It's yeah. also, I just want to say, it's also really nice to see Golden Spamfish back in his element. Like he's yeah. now crushing. Look at how oh, yeah. fast he's getting Look these models this. together. Yeah. Already like, got those three totally lugs, killing it. Yeah, yeah, on the outside. Um, Ivan, on the other hand, created that one feature in the very beginning and that created all three of those center bosses with that one single feature. Uh, another thing about Ivan uh, that you may not have, have noticed, I know you kind of touched on this earlier with regards to the clean interface. Ivan doesn't use any toolbars. There's no toolbars in his SolidWorks setup other than like the mandatory ones. But you notice mm -hmm. that he's never going up to the toolbar and clicking an icon. He's never, you know, he, he's doing everything out in the graphics area using uh, the, the S key, using shortcut menus, using hotkeys. But there's no icon toolbars that he's going to for like boss extrude or cut revolve or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah, I, lo I love that the uh, style of working. I've been experimenting myself with some uh, speed modeling techniques in my uh, setup, programming my mouse to uh, bring up certain toolbars. You know, bring up the S key toolbar, for example, with a certain button on the mouse. You know, everybody uses the. Uh, you know, this is like yep. one of the most common mice in in engineering. I would yep. say, right? You know, the uh, Logitech MX Pro, right? So, 
you know, that one has so many buttons on it, you can program them to do uh, whatever you need. You want, right? Yeah, very yeah. cool. Yeah. And I, it looks like Ivan decided to use a, a rib command for that uh, that shape Art. that was coming up. I mean, I know I labeled it as a rib in the print, but it could be anything. You could do it as a as a, uh, a gusset, a support, a, you know, whatever you want to call it. You could do it as a thin feature extrude, a solid extrude. Uh, but he decided to do that as a rib. And wow, it looks like that really paid off because he had that rib and that lug kind of sticking out the outside. And now he's looking down from the top and looks to just about have this model created in a very short period of time. So. Uh, very, very impressive work there from Ivan. There's still a couple more features on this model. We can see there's that kind of uh, angled bug sticking out the backside of this space plate, as well as uh, a little opening there. So you could put some kind of a, you know, a bolt and a nut on that to squeeze it together as it gets mounted on the spaceship. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, I'm glad you picked aluminum 6061. Smart choice for, you know, interstellar travel. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta always be worried about weight, right? Everything's exactly. gonna be light. We didn't we didn't have uh, the budget for titanium, so uh, so <laughs> so we just decided to go with the, what we call the poor man's titanium. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Ten sixty aluminum. <laughs> yeah, sixty sixty one is definitely my favorite. <laughs> it's my go-to aluminum. Go-to aluminum. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, Victor K in the chat flexing a little bit. He's gonna have his time to shine in just a few minutes. Uh, says he got it. He's got it already. <clears throat> Never seen a rib like uh, like that. I liked until this moment. Very nice, very nice. <laughs> uh, let's see here. What else we got in the chat going on in the chat? Apple has the market cornered on titanium. Neck and neck, Tafon, yeah, I agree. This is really, really close here. Both the runners are kind of on that same feature, creating that lug that's sticking out the back. Um, we see that Ivan has the, the, uh, the circular pattern of the ribs already in place. Um, interesting that it, it's really interesting that both of the runners ended up creating the pattern uh, in the in the position that they created it. And I don't want to say too much because I don't want to I don't want to give anybody a, an edge here from my observation. So I'm just going to kind of see how this plays out. But very interesting the the location of some of the features here relative to what's on the print. <laughs> it's a good way of putting it, Toby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, sure. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I don't know what else to say. How's how's uh, the coffee this morning? It's tasting pretty good. Oh, we might yeah. see a delete face though from from the golden yeah. spam fish. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, this is probably going to happen. I mean, I don't think anybody's going to be shocked if we see that get pulled out of the uh, the quiver here. And Ivan doing a little bit of a move. Looks like he's doing some kind of a move command, a body move. Yeah, uh, to we're maybe... seeing some wacky stuff this morning. <laughs> I don't know what we put in the coffee, but uh, there's some wacky stuff happening. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Uh, this is not what I was expecting on this this model, but a nice nice correction there. Nice course correction from Ivan. Wow. Yeah. Guys, that's, uh, that's definitely a highlight right there. You're going to want to go back and check out that course correction that Ivan made. That was yeah, that's not traditional parametric uh, <laughs> technique, you know, but hey, it works and you got to do what you got to do and when the crunch time is on. Yes, indeed. And uh, we see uh, we see that the golden spamfish over on the left coming through with that rib, creating that rib geometry. Uh, very, very cool. And uh, Ivan the Reasonable looks like uh, he's got uh, what looks to be a pretty good view of that space plate. Uh, space plate. Yep. Uh, Garam Garamaro is saying uh, that he Ivan is almost done. I agree with that sentiment in the chat. Yeah, Victor K says close. this segment brought to you by Band Aid. Yes, yes indeed. <laughs> yeah, this is a uh, it's it's close. It's it's you know even though we've taken a strange journey to get here. It's a close match. Yeah, it's very cool to see both of the runners uh, basically coming down. Uh, the final the final few steps here on this model and what's and, the moon like today i mean there's, yeah, there's some weird stuff in, going indeed. on and i've been coming in with an answer here one six four eight grams and guys congratulations we have our very first member of the final four wow 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 that is correct one six four eight grams is correct for the space plate what a matchup between these two titans the golden spamfish going all the way to the end of the, the elite eight congratulations to the golden spamfish ivan the reasonable getting it correct locking down the win and moving on to the final four for the second year in a row and uh i have to look at my notes